I can't think of a more important issue than to challenge the, 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 the large corporate vision that shapes our society and global uh, society, and which is, as we speak, determining what I call our digital destiny, already underway major and significant changes, actually a continuation, more likely, of the business model, the commercial consolidated models which have shaped, as Rob was saying, radio and the broadcast television and, and cable television and satellite television, I suggest to you, already in a very advanced way, shaping the new digital media. And if we're going to see our values sustainable, democratic values, diversity, opportunity, a system which promotes peace and justice around the world, something I think that we in particular in the U.S. are responsible for. If we're going to have a system where, unlike the current system, <clears throat> excuse me, media services are owned by women and people of color and even low-income people, then we need now to challenge these very powerful forces. And I suggest to you that unless we act in very significant strategic ways, our ability to organize through the new media, our ability to challenge what is likely to be an even more powerful, commercialized, commodified presence in our lives and the lives of most people around the world, will be severely challenged. The media is our filters of consciousness. And we're about to see the most powerful communication system ever created by humans surround us. It will be ubiquitous. Wherever we are, and already for some, it's true. Wherever we are, we will be connected. This torrent of interactive information will be flowing through three platforms, I hate to use a technical word, that we will have to organize. So we have the PC, we have the cell phone, and we have the television. These will be the three portals of our consciousness. What will be the message? The fact is, the dominant message is going to be consume, to buy, to be entertained. That's where the investment is occurring. That's where the, the strategic alliances are, are occurring. And if you look at the spate of mergers going on now, we know, and I will talk about it if we have time, we know we have seen unprecedented consolidation in so-called old media, where fewer and fewer owners control the nation's newspapers, which are really sort of in the final gasp now. They own, a few owners own the radio stations, broadcast television stations. Really two companies control much of what we see on cable television, Comcast, and Time Warner. The two competing direct broadcast satellite uh, radio services are, are trying to merge. But we also have consolidation, and I think this is a warning sign for us. When Rupert Murdoch's News Corps buys the most powerful social network, MySpace, when Google buys the world's most powerful delivery system for video, YouTube, all of these mergers from Google and Microsoft and others, also they can perfect a system. It's about a system that can track each and every one of us to deliver, uh, to, deliver to us basically for sale and advertiser supported content and services that all these companies are all working together to build this most powerful platform. So the new media is going to be an even more important filter of our consciousness. Think about the kind of multifaceted organizing and counter strategies we must deploy to make sure that within what will be a digital media system largely controlled by very giant corporations interested per principally in advertising and marketing, that we strategically place sustainable media organi organizations and values within that system all across the country. We no longer can rest our hopes that the current news system is really going to provide us with the kind of news and information and challenge the power and, and support of dissent that we need. And what is the one word that you hear at all these industry conferences 
or in the industry publications, monetization. I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise to you, but that's the dominant value underlying all of this investment in new media for most of the corporations. They wanted to monetize our behaviors. And indeed, if you look at what the companies are doing in terms of data collection, the advertising and media companies and the technology companies have perfected a system that, as I said, tracks every one of us and understands and identifies our individual behaviors and now follows us on the internet, site to site, something they call behavioral retargeting, to get us, in their words, to quote unquote, convert, to buy, to like a brand, to like the brands from the Fortune 1000. Now this technology will be used by candidates and organizations with deep pockets, and I think that's something we need to strategize now. We need to be concerned about how this new media system is going to affect elections, because there's a lesson here. And the lesson is that you, you cannot wait and allow the industry to proceed and hope simultaneously that government will intervene if you want to see a public interest media system. And go to digitalads.org and it, it, it gives you a view of what um, most of the major companies are doing to target young people to consume unhealthy food. This is such a powerful system focused on satisfying oneself, identifying with popular brands. I called it the brandwashing of America. The process is very, very difficult, the policy process, because, of the, because we've allowed these companies to dominate the media communications landscape for so long. And I suggest to you we need to look at what's, what's called Web 2.0. We need to look at where the internet is going. We have time now to intervene and to try to figure out how we create sustainable media institutions, as I said, within this new system. That while we campaign for a more reformed media in Congress at the FCC, that you could, you could invest and you could bring people together to create social networks owned and operated by real people, community people, in San Francisco, in New Orleans, places, in fact, I suggest to you, where the public interest community should in indeed embrace some kind of commercial vision, one that is responsible, one that protects privacy, with, with, with the revenues going back into the community, sites owned by uh, women, people of color, poor people, a different model, but the, I'm gonna end now. The new, this new media system is going to make billions and billions of dollars each year. It's going to be the avenue for consciousness. It's going to be the mechanism to organize. Public interest people need sustainable models to organize in the new media sphere. This critical transition period from old media to new, with a whole host of new behaviors, known as Web 2.0, no, to use a phrase, provides us with a critical window of opportunity to get in, own a piece of it, that can be sustainable and that will support the long-term efforts that we know require us to, to fight for uh, the kind of social justice system that we need. Thanks. Look, I left that. Look, there's a lot of things we have to do with public policy. There are a lot of gr good groups out there, Common Cause, Free Press, Media Access Project first, and, and Move On has done terrific work here. For, in addition to a, what I think is a strategic intervention in the market so we can tell our stories in the long term and counter what will be a very powerful corporate story dominating the, 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 the mainstream media, there are real policy things we need to do. You've all, hopefully you've heard of network neutrality, that's to keep the internet open, that's to prevent the cable and the telephone companies that now control 99% of US broadband from uh, determining which content goes on fast lanes and slow lanes, go to save the internet. Uh, dot, uh, com. Uh, in terms of wireless, there's a big battle underway to have the rest of the public airwaves that provides wireless um, and other uh, and mobile communication.
presentations, to be more open, to be more accessible for nonprofit public interest voices that save our uh, spectrum. We need to have that wireless uh, pipeline as well. As far as public radio, I work on public television issues. I don't have that much expertise in public radio, but I would say this, that what we have to do as part of the restructuring of the media system is to, in fact, create, building on A.B. Goodman and others have done, a new non-commercial uh, alternative system that can really provide the public with the news that certainly PBS uh, won't be able to provide. Thanks. Public access is also important. 